Yes. Now, let us tell you that there is two ascensions going on. You will not hear this publicly, as it can be quite uh, unsettling for some. But this game is about choice, you understand. And moving into 5D consciousness has both a dark side and a light side. The ascension process works up to the field of one and down into the field of death or what we would call pain. And so there are many on your planet that are working on their ascension of darkness currently. And how this works is what they are doing is they are having experiences, experiences and they are acting out their trauma on every level possible. And what this does is it removes the ability for them to connect to their heart center because you are all connected to your heart center when you are born. This is the unconditional loving that you have as a baby. This is you sharing your last uh, slimy Cheeto with your mother, even though you want to eat it. This is the hug that you would give a complete stranger. And so although you have the bottom three chakras that are based in programming of you, this is not who you are. And, and, and so what the dark ascension process is, is by demonstration, look at that word, demonstration, of acting out trauma publicly and internally, you create the idea that you could be separate from your heart. Many of you wonder, how could they do such things? How could they hurt babies? How could they do these horrific things to each other? And why are they doing it to us is because they are working on their college degree, just as you are. And because you are in the universe of free will choice, this is just as a important choice than anything else. And as many times you played as a child, you wanted to be the bad guy and you want to be the good guy. You have no real judgment of which game you're playing and it until you realize that there is all of the negativity that you have poured out, you will have to return that back to love. We do not like to call it karma, although it is called karma in your world. Karma is basically cause and effect. What you put out is what you get back. There is no universal counsel saying you have to repent in such a way where you must be punished. All of the punishment you believe you experience is self-imposed. You bring it upon yourself because the more you reach for the light, the more you feel guilty, the more ashamed you start to realize you always have been. And so this is the opposition of the same ascension game as they are quickly working to become their trauma, to become their anger, to become their guilt, to become their shame, to become their own death. You are working to integrate all of these aspects back into love. And so what is shame actually? There is only one true, true feeling or true nemesis within you. And it isn't a nemesis at all. It is the idea that you could be separated from God and anything separated from God is death. Because there is only life in God. God is alive. It's omnipresence everywhere. And so for you to have a death experience, even the body will decompose and move back into God. It will be food for the insects, which is God. And it will then repurpose itself back into some sort of vehicle, which is God. Whether it is your mushroom or something else that will work as a decomposing object, but it will always be God. And so only the space, the void between, can have the experience of no thing, of nothingness, of emptiness, of, of the idea that it could not be God. And although they are very much acting just the same as you, you are just acting. You have all forgot you are God and they want to destroy God. It's just a different game. And when you move all the way into your heart chakra and live from your fourth density, which is your inner child, which is your imagination, you will see that they are an important part of your experience. There is a very important role that the dark is holding for you because the, the energy of life is the element of fire. And so you need a burning desire within you to fire you up 
to be different. Let us say the example of a year ago, you idolized a certain celebrity and you thought, wow, they are everything I would want to be. They are magnificent. And then you find out they are part of the de ascension program or the ascension in the dark program. And they are working their way to graduate into their own trauma and become the demonic aspect of the God conscious self that they were, you would realize that you no longer idolize this. And so these is a very important part of exposure because you're letting go of false idols. You're letting go of religions. You're letting go of old ideals that you have had to hold on to because you are seeing that anything that tells you how to speak to God or that you can speak to God or you cannot is actually demonic in nature. Now we say all that the demonic state is, is you or someone else acting out trauma. When you act out trauma, that is demonic energy. And so if you look at your scriptures and you will see that Jesus said, you will heal the sick, you will cleanse the lepers, you will cast out demons, you will feed the poor, you will walk on water, you will turn water into wine. He was referring to the five fractions, fract fractures of spirit. When he says, clean the the lepers, cleanse the lepers. He is talking about clean up your shame, accept and love your shame. When he says cast out the demons, he is asking you to move in to your anger and your grief. Your guilt is feeding the poor because when you are guilty, you do not believe you deserve prosperity. And so you understand that his words to the disciples who became apostles is where you are. You are all the disciples of your own Christ within, and you will become apostles as soon as you integrate these five. Now, I know the channel has given you much teachings in the Superhuman Academy on the 12 aspects of the mind, which are written in your Bible as the 12 disciples. But we would like to focus this entire workshop just to the inner child. We do not need to go into logistics of how all of the components work in every fraction of your mind. We want you to play. We want you to lighten up. We want you to forgive. We want you to remember what it was like to be a child that's highest excitement was just to be able to be curious, adventurous, allowing, accepting, loving, sharing, and creating. This is where you're all working back to. But as you move on your own yellow brick road, you will be walking this walk with five fractures of your spirit. And this is your baggage. This is your bag of bonds. This is your rowdy toddlers in the back of the minivan. And you will all go together because the definition of love is acceptance. And so when we remind you how to lovingly accept the shame within you, well, then you will notice that it begins to remind itself that it is actually confidence. You don't need to program it to confidence. It will become its natural form. What is the definition of sin? Sin is missing the mark or the channel's definition, which we love, is separation in nature. Nature means name. So when you have moved away from who you are in the name of Christ, in the name of your Lord and your God presence within you, then you are sinning, which means that you have five sins and they are acting as rowdy children. I want you to really pay attention to what I am going to say next because what I am going to say next is going to show you just how much alive these five aspects are of you and how you can no longer move forward whatsoever on this road without working directly with them. The denial, the avoidance, the medication, following their highest joy is getting you right back to the beginning.
of your road. I'm right back at the road. I'm right back at the beginning. I'm right back in this situation. It is because their objective is to get you not to start but to believe that you have started. You have many years and do math very quickly and find out how many seven year cycles you have had on this particular incarnation of Earth. The channel has just reached her seventh seven year cycle. That means she has had seven full opportunities to master these five aspects. And she is just now waking up to the fact that they exist. And so it doesn't have anything to do with what you know. It has everything to do with what you do with the knowledge you have. And so as you breathe into your belly, whether you would like to keep your hands on your belly the whole time, you would like to keep your hands on your heart the whole time. If you want to take this information into the heart chakra, keep your hands on your heart during the session. If you want to digest what we are saying, keep your hands on your belly. If you want to feel confident about this information, put your hands on your hips and just be with us. So the information I'm going to give you is not something that you probably do not know analytically, but we want you to understand this truly, deeply, emotionally, is that how could these five aspects be alive? Well, let us take your concept of a ghost. What is a ghost? A ghost seems to be a spirit without a body, yes, or a soul without a body. They are called lost souls. The spirit has gone back to the spirit world and the soul walks the earth and the soul is the pattern. And so this is why you will say, oh, I went to this haunted hotel and this lady was in the corner just walking in circles because they're just walking out the program. They're walking out the pattern. They have to walk out the pattern no matter what. And there are many parts of your lost soul that you are walking out a pattern over and over again and you have no idea that you're doing it. And so this part of you is the part of you that resides in grief because that is the dead part of you or the lost part of you, the lost soul within you. And you have traveled tens of thousands of years to get to this moment. Tens of thousands of years to get to this moment. Take a breath. You have arrived. There is enough light on the planet. There is enough awareness within you. There is enough connection to your higher self now to do the work easily, effortly, and playfully. You do not need to suffer. You do not need to go into the trauma to heal the trauma. You just need to learn how to love yourself with or without it. And when you fully embrace that your guilt is going with you on this yellow brick road and your shame is going with you on this yellow brick road, as you walk together, we understand in your book, The Course in Miracles, we realize that all bad behavior is a call for love. And so if these are behaving negatively within your field, what do they want from you? Well, they are very much alive and here is how. When you come in, you are a 100% full full circle experience of spirit. You are whole. You are a whole spirit. And let us say that through the agreement that you have in the third dimension, which is a game of duality, that five parts of you will be shifted and downloaded or downgraded into what we would call separation of consciousness or death consciousness. This is your inner zombie, let us say, your inner ghost. And you are programmed over seven years to become this aspect. So let us say it takes seven years to kill the inner child. This is why in your Bible, there's, there is quite a bit of resurrection and death because first you will resurrect the inner child from its death experience. So you, many of you did not realize this, but most of your inner children were dead by the time you were seven. And this dead part of you wanted to live just like the ghosts that the mediums out there are translating or the ones you see in the cemetery. There is a desire to live even in death. Because there will always be a desire to exist because you cannot not exist even if you believe you're dead. And so by the time your inner child is seven years old, you have five dead parts of your consciousness. And now this is very much consciousness, but it's acting in the place of death. So let us say what your shame really is. Your shame is the loss of your confidence. It is the death of your confidence. 
Your guilt is the death of your self-worth. Your anger is the death of your joy. Take a breath. Take a breath here and realize that when you're experiencing grief, you are actually experiencing the death of love. Let us say that shame, guilt, anger, and grief are all the tabletop and the whole entire idea. And so that was the wrong context of words, but you get the point. We're looking in the mind for a, a metaphor. And so you get this idea and you all have this. This is part of your agreement. This is all part of your agreement. Even if you believe that someone does not have this um, and, and they are part of this particular Ascension program, then they are not telling the truth. Now, we will tell you that there is a whole new civilization present and many of you who understand quantum physics are participating in a hybrid program right now. You are a hybrid guide. You are much more alien than you know that you are, which means that although you might say, oh, I am I am source energy, and but you might be sponsored by the Palladian Collective or the Octorian Collective. And there's been a few of you that we have reached out privately to offer uh, ET training as you are very much ETs and it's time for you to remember. And so if you have had that offer, then we have reached out to you through the channel to help you remember that you have a very important role in the hybrid program. Many of you have hybrid children that you don't even know about. So this game is much more big, is much more um, intense and bigger than your money issue or your uh, or your belly fat. You see, it is much more fun when you look at the galactic states. And so these five death parts of you take some of your life because they are very much alive, aren't they? But they are residing in what we would call zombie consciousness or death consciousness. They are vibrating very, very low. Let us say that, that guilt vibrates lower than a rock. <laughs> this is why you feel heavy. This is why you feel like you're stuck, you see. Something slimy and yucky is the same frequency as shame, you see. And so each of these five fractor, fractions of your... Uh, of your uh, spirit. This is where much of your energy is going, my loves. This is why you need coffees and you need drinks to awaken and you need more naps. It's because you don't realize is that your spirit consciousness is actually constantly uh, uh, creating energy sources for five ghosts that live within your body consciousness and they have possessed your consciousness they have possessed your cellular body they have possessed the citizens that live within your kingdom and so as you work to purify and integrate and fall madly in love with yourself this is when you will uh, experience spiritual warfare because it is one thing for guilt to act out its guilty conscience through over service or a worry or rescuing or uh, or some sort of criminal mind ideas or how can I get away with this manipulation, you see. But it also can destroy certain organs of your body because guilt means I must be punished. And so therefore, you could be saying, help me. God, help me, help me, St. Germain, I see the violet flame, but if the cells have all been programmed that I must be punished, then you are probably putting some sort of toxin in your body that feels like your highest excitement that is actually buffering the ability to accept it, or you are allowing someone to humiliate you and you're calling it love. And so let us just say that we are here with you to to help you uh, exercise this possession. And now this is why the channel spent so many months studying demonology is so that she would know thyself because there is no antichrist. There is only you pretending to be your own 
Antichrist. And so when you realize that there could be much more than five of these, but let us keep it simple and say for the inner child, the inner child likes to work with what it can work on on its two hands and nothing more. And that's why most numerology that is that is worked within the inner child, it does not go higher than 20 because you have 20 fingers and 20 toes and the inner child can work with that. And so for this particular part, we would like to keep working directly with the inner child because the inner child can love the unlovable. This is why in our last transmission, we had you to assign uh, an animal or an inanimate object to your ego aspects. And the reason why is because ghosts are scary and monsters are scary. But a polar bear isn't scary or an ugly fish. Well, that's silly. And so having the idea that you could put these, uh, these, these fractions, these fractals of your consciousness into something that the inner child could love. Well, this is one step ahead of everyone else because now you're loving the unlovable. And this is all you desire, isn't it? You want your beloved to love the parts of you that you don't love. That's all you want from them. And when they do not love you, they do not hold the space when you are ugly crying, as you say. Well, then you are mad at them because they are not loving the parts of you that are unlovable. And so this is why they have to abandon and reject you. Because this is how possession works. You all act out each other's trauma and you all act each other's heart fields. And so you are either engaging in a glimmer, which is a positive trigger, or you are engaging in a trigger to show you where your trauma is very much alive in the mirror of the holographic consciousness of the matrix. But you are all on your own yellow brick road. And although you may all intersect and weave, it is only to play the mirror for the person who is focused. So you all will play exactly who I expect you to play in my movie and same with the channel. And when I am in your movie, I must behave exactly how you assume I will, which means that if you do not know the leader of your game and your game, the five, right? The five uh, aspects of ego, then you're probably constantly getting shocked by what is happening outside of you because you don't know who the leader of the pack is. And one of the ideas of studying demonology, the channel found it very interesting that when demons are alone with each other, they are constantly beating each other up. They're all trying to kill the, each other even though they're already dead because all they know is destruction. And so this is why this army is so easy to, uh, let us say, defeat in the idea of love is because they are all attacking each other. Now, when the idea, though, of their food source, which is you, being attacked, well, then they gang up on the outside you see, so this is why you can have horrific, horrific self-talk. You're stupid. You should be ashamed of yourself. But if someone said that day outside of you, well, then they would be met with anger because now all of them will gang up on the outside because it's threatening their livelihood, their host, which is you. Now, all of these aspects that have turned demonic in nature or death in nature are not bad. They're not bad at all. They are just not alive. Think about the parts of you that you don't feel are alive. Where are you not living? Where are you not expanding? What era of your life is not fruiting or growing? Well, this is where these aspects are. And the longer you are in denial, well, your delusions won't work. Your, your imagineering work will not work if you are in denial of these. And so if you look at the story of Dorothy, which we chose because our channel lives in Kansas, which we chuckle at, is this idea is that she was unhappy where she was. And she made a wish. And she wanted the Wicked Witch to go away who was trying to steal her beloved dog, her puppy. And so she went into a dream state. 
and found herself on the Yellow Brick Road. And on this road, she had many different adventures and she met different mirrors, all of the aspects from the flying monkeys to the little munchkin people. They were all part of the mirrored aspects of her own consciousness because there was only Dorothy in that story. And so she met some friends. And now this idea makes it so much easier to digest because she looked at these aspects as friends, not as enemies, you see. And we have all been taught to hide our shame, to cover up our guilt, to uh, filter our anger somewhere, and to run away from our grief and to honor fear, you see. And so because we did not at seven years old say, hmm, okay, so now I have five ghosts living in my house, but I'm going for it. And my highest joy is freedom. And so my yellow brick road is freedom. Let's go and we'll work it out as we go along. We didn't do that. You see, and depending on who the leader of your gang is, is going to tell you exactly where you are in your manifestation today. So let us say that your leader of your pack is fear. Well, then you've not really pulled the trigger on any of your dreams. They're all just sitting in your imagination. You are feeling very unmotivated or fearful or what ifing yourself to death. And this is also found in constant failures. Some of you have fear as your leader, but it appears as fearlessness. And so it's like a trap. Like, I know, let's be fearless so we can create some more fear. Realize that the channel's dog can only be a dog. And so fear can only be fear. And shame can only be shame. And what does shame want? More shame. What do you want? And if your theme is prosperity? more prosperity. So you see, everyone is doing their job perfectly. It is only your judgment of this idea that keeps you confused. If you lear learn to understand that you are working with these aspects, whether you like it or not, because it's part of the, uh, it's part of the fifth dimensional ascension process and third dimensional game, well, then you would just get busy living, wouldn't you? But let us say guilt is your main, uh, let us say gang uh, leader, well, then you are constantly living in a state of getting excited for different ways to guilt yourself. And you are also self-punishing. These are those of you who have hurt your own bodies through starvation or cutting or such negative self-talk that you have given yourselves autoimmune disease or, or some sort of uh, arthritis. You have inflammation everywhere. You have overthinking that causes migraines. You have fertility issues. Any way that would punish your desires, you are attracting it or have. And so when anger is the leader of your pack, that you are quite volatile, or if you are a light worker with anger as your leadership, well, then you've probably gained quite a bit of weight or you have some sort of debilitating back issues, you see? And so when you are not living as the weather within you, you are suppressing it. And so all depression is repressed emotion. And what is emotion? Well, it is your version of the weather. So you can see your mother earth right now is doing her deascension and reascension process by letting go. You see, every time you actually do sit in ground and give to the earth your sorrow, she will transmute it. But she has been collecting this for thousands and thousands of years for all of us. And so she is now saying, I want to lighten up. So I'm letting all your stuff go, you see. And so this is going to be why New York can have an earthquake, why there can be floods in deserts, because she is going to let go whether you like it or not. And if you find yourself in the path of an earthquake that swallows you up, well, I can guarantee that your fear manifested that. Because nothing can happen to you that you are not a vibrational match of ever.
There are no exceptions and there are no randoms. Every single thing that you meet on your yellow brick road is for you. It is the glimmer or it is the trigger. And if you can look through the eyes of the observer and when you cannot find compassion, you can shift to the eyes of the inner child. You will continue to walk and walk and dance and sing and play your whole way there, whether you like it or not, because at some point you're going to realize the more you resist one of these aspects, the stronger it gets. Because the reason that they can be alive is they have your spirit. This is why you're exhausted, because there are five broken parts of your spirit living double lives which means that the source energy that you're bringing into your body during meditation is getting distributedly based on who and what is focusing. So if you're covering up guilt, guilt's going to get 90% of your energy. This is why you're exhausted. So if you are covering up shame, shame is going to pull all that life force energy and it's going to manifest the proper dis-ease to go with it in the correct chakra, in the correct organ, because there are no randoms and everything is precise and mathematical in nature. It will always be perfection, even in destruction. And so really feel into what you would like to experience from today's transmission and set an intention. Set an intention for the easy button. I want to play my way. And just as some of you have children or family members, and you will never not have these family members, you have learned to embrace them. You deal with the cynicism of your uncle. You deal with the drama of your drunken aunt. And you end up still going home for Christmas, even though you know they will be there. And this is no different, except Christmas will be every day with these particulars. And so we wanted you just to ground and remember and look at this as a grand game of experience, of curiosity, of remembering, of adventure, of love, of prosperity, of life. And if you desire in this now moment to truly live, give yourself permission to do so. Because these five broken pieces of you, although are living out your life force energy through their idea, they are very much living out the character of death. Just like a dog will be a dog and shame will be shame. Now, the more you turn towards it and the more you bring acceptance and love towards it, well, guess what? It's going to return to its natural state because you are no longer sinning. When you are separated from nature, you are going to do naughty things. You're going to crave naughty things. You're going to share naughty things. You're going to be naughty. And that's your state of being. So imagine that the state of being that law of attraction delivers your particular reality to is the combination of the I am, which is omnipresent God consciousness, and these five thug members. And this is your reality. And so you can see that you have created much bliss and joy in your life and things that if these five elements were not here, they would be absolutely perfect because you did come for the fairy tale. You came for happily ever after, not happily ever after for a year until your partner becomes to be a psycho. You see, you came for the happily ever after. And if you can convert death back into life, well, then you're God. And that's what you're here to do. The first way that you will become Jesus Christ within you is to resurrect your own dead parts. This is where our private sessions have come in handy. This is where the inner child sessions have come in handy. And you're starting to put all of this together, even though you knew all of this before we said it. Hopefully we can give you a new a way of looking at it. And you can stop judging those who are going to call it going to college to learn how to be dead. Stop judging them. They make your adventure fun, trust me. When you start to look at if everything was light and love, would someone buy a perfectly white canvas with no texture or interest? No. 
You want to buy the canvas that has contrast, that has a story, that has a map, that has a musical element to it, who has a mathematical principle. And this is your life. So although you will be walking on your yellow brick road, whether you like it or not, as your higher self has your destiny, how you get it is up to you. You can stay exactly where you are and wait until the explosions happen and you have to move or you can get busy living and work out your kinks on the way. So let us take one final breath and think of three things that we are grateful for in this now moment. And just be in that space of gratitude. Because you see, shame can't be shame if you're grateful for it. If, it lo if you love it. And so we will give you the techniques today on how to do all of this, including some self-hypnosis guides from your Ascended Master, St. Germain. And with that,